Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I'm still working on my dragon. It, the pattern is all done and it will go up on my website as soon as I have him painted and all the instructions are written, but I'm working on him. But I thought maybe I would show you this ahead of time. Uh, I'm, I did not intend to put scales on my dragon. I was just going to paint scales. That would have saved me probably three or four days actually because <laughs> when I finally decided that I was going to use the Silky Smooth Air Dry Clay recipe that's on my website to sculpt scales, they don't dry as quickly as the one layer of paper strips and paste did. That, that was dry overnight. But the scales themselves, um, they, they were in front of a fan all night last night and they're still not well they're, they're dry on the outside and they feel hard but they're not dry all the way inside and so it's going to take a couple more days i also haven't finished all of him <laughs> i'm still working on it <laughs> so this this takes a while but i thought i'd let you see how i did it just in case you're making a, a dragon or a um a lizard snake fish the the scales went on faster than they would if you hand sculpted every single one but I'm not telling you that it's fast. It took maybe four hours to do this side yesterday. I tried for kind of a general feel of snake scales on his neck. And then I sort of borrowed the scales from an iguana for uh, the rest of his face. Just because I, I really like those uh, circles. I didn't put them as close together. Obviously on a real iguana they go right up next to each other. But this was kind of a design idea. I wanted, I'm going to be using um, a, a darker glaze and I wanted those circles to show up really nicely. So it was just something I wanted to do. I did uh, make ram's horns <laughs> for my dragon, but you'll probably want to uh, make skinnier ones. I'll show you how to do that when I <laughs> get all the instructions done. I used the Silky Smooth Air Dry Clay recipe and I am kneading in the very last bit of flour. It's still slightly sticky and you can see it's it's taking some real nice curves and, and wrinkles. This is just about right. I think I'm going to be able to make some really nice scales with this. Now you want to practice on a piece of cardboard rather than your actual sculpture. And that would look really cool on a smaller sculpture, but I'm I've got kind of a big one, so I'm going to try this one instead, just the corner. The one thing to um, be really careful with when using my Silky Smooth Air Dry Clay recipe is that the surface will kind of stiffen up quite quickly because of the cornstarch in the mixture. And what that means is that when you're adding a new uh, wet piece like I'm doing here, it may not stick really well to the piece that's already on there because the piece that's been out in the air will have um, dried out just a little bit on the surface. So what you may need to do is either work it really well like I am, just kind of uh, work those two pieces together so they meld really well, or you may actually need to brush on a little bit of water or a little bit of glue. If you don't do that and the two pieces don't stick really well together, you could end up having a crack in that area because as they dry, the two separate pieces might actually pull apart and that would look really weird on your dragon or snake. I decided that this was too much. Uh, the The texture is really nice, but it just with with the with having it on the entire neck, it just it felt like it was getting to be too much. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going back over it. Fortunately, it's still 
damp enough. And I'm giving him some of those really wide scales, I don't know what they're actually called, that snakes have on their, on their um, tummy. And I'm just going back over it with the damp spatula here. Now obviously this means that if, if you think this might be an issue with whatever sculpture you're working on, you want to keep checking it from, you know, from a distance fairly often because if you leave it too long, um, you, you won't be able to flatten them out. They, they won't be soft enough anymore and you'll have to go back over it uh, with, a, with another layer Now I'm noticing that because I'm uh, changing these scales into long flat pieces, there's quite a bit of um, texturing going on and I have to decide if I'm going to leave that or smooth it off. And I've decided to leave it only because I deliberately left the spikes really rough. When I added uh, the layer of brown paper over these spikes, I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, they're not very professionally done, I guess you could say. I didn't make them really smooth, and I decided to leave that because it just gave them kind of a wild look. Because of that, I'm going to leave the texture on the bottom of these big flat scales, just because I think it kind of matches. But you will have a different design choice to make with your dragon or snake or whatever, um, whatever it is you're working on. Now, I'm not done with this side yet, but I know that this side it can't get done <laughs> while this part is still wet because I wouldn't have anything to hold on to. So I'm going to, um, now when it's, when it's still damp enough, and it's almost getting a little bit too hard right now, but I'm smoothing it out so that it'll kind of um, gradually move towards the same level as the cardboard. When I come back over it tomorrow, I'll be able to put the new uh, air dry clay over this part just a little bit and it won't create that weird jagged line. So right now I'm just trying to um, create some scales on his face that look a little bit more iguana like. If you don't think it'll stick well enough even um, with putting the water on the surface go ahead and get out some glue and just brush it over the sculpture I'm just putting some little noodles of clay here. I'm giving him some wrinkles. I'm not getting too carried away, I hope. Now the one thing I'm not too sure about is the transition from his beak to his scales. I think maybe what I have to do is just, maybe that would work. As soon as I get the video online, I'll go back and, and put the rest of the iguana spots on this side. And then I'll let it dry for a couple of days at least in front of a fan because this really is going to take a long time. Um, I got a few things that I really need to do around the house anyway. So it's probably a good thing that I'm giving myself an excuse to put him down and rest for a while. After that, I'm going to give it a coat of primer. You could use gesso and then I'll paint him get those instructions written and then he'll be available uh, out on my website if you would like to make a dragon using my my um, pattern. You don't have to put scales on yours either. <laughs> just, I'm just getting really carried away with this guy. I, I seem to keep thinking up things to do to him or things to add to him. He's getting kind of busy right now but um, just having so much fun with it. <laughs> now if you have any ideas for making scales that might be easier or that would be possible if you don't happen to have all the ingredients that you would need to make the uh, do-it-yourself um, air dry clay. Please do let us know your ideas too. Be sure to watch for the pattern. It's going to come out in a couple of weeks, I hope, if you would like to make a dragon of your own using my pattern. And no, you don't have to put ram's horns on yours. I, I will have instructions for making really easy but really cool straighter horns, um, more traditional 
uh, horns that you would normally see on a dragon. I just happened to think this would be cool for mine. So watch for it. Subscribe if you haven't already so you'll be notified. And in the meantime, come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.